Hello my gorgeous, wonderful, splendid, beautiful dumplings. In today's video, we're going to be discussing something a little bit different, which is privacy and boundaries. Because, um, surprisingly enough, I, I know it may not seem it, but, uh, YouTubers, well, we're actually apparently humans. And I fully acknowledge I may be exempt from that, but uh, some people seem to not realize that this platform is actually inhabited with normal human beings. Now, yeah, folk like Jeffree Star probably aren't in the normal category, but you know, he's human. Kind of. Uh, and yeah, uh, most people on this platform basically are nice, loving, fun human beings that just create content to basically have a good time. But this moves us on to our topic of privacy and boundaries. Because recently I have seen a lot of people have been speaking about one of my personal favourite content creators of all time, which is Jenna Marbles. Now Jenna Marbles for me is somebody who I've watched for like a ridiculous amount of time. One of my old friends first introduced me to her channel. And to be honest, I've watched her channel through the good times and the bad times in my life And it was something that was just always there, you know, just those funny little dogs Just just were there and I enjoyed it and consumed that content Happy Easter, Marble! <laughs> It just made my days a, a little bit easier, to be honest. So I will always have Jenna Marbles in this positive place in my brain, personally. And now this year, obviously, Jenna Marbles did quit YouTube. It was a quite a surprising thing at the time. And no, I'm not going to show her video because I believe this video comes from a real genuine place of empathy, disappointment, and sadness from Jenna Marbles herself. So no, I won't play the clips from this video. And even at the time, I really didn't understand the full context to Jenna leaving YouTube. And I'll be honest with you, I feel a little bit ignorant when it comes to that situation because I first heard Jenna Marbles was leaving YouTube and she had uploaded a video stating why and I didn't watch the video instantly and I came onto Twitter being like, oh, cancel culture bad, cancel culture this and that. When in reality, that really isn't the case. Jenna Marbles left YouTube on her own accord when she released an apology video stating that she basically felt disappointed and upset and basically ashamed that she thinks her platform was built on her previous videos of where she dressed up as people of color and she was obviously ashamed by that and she left YouTube. She didn't want to be a part of it anymore because she felt she had contributed it in such a wrong way and I'm not going to discuss that. I'm not going to discuss her apology because that apology isn't for me for very obvious reasons. So no, I'm not going to discuss that but I did just want to, you know, kind of state the, the, the history of this year. Hello, I'm here. Um, I haven't been on the internet for a while. Uh, I just wanted to come on with Julian and let you guys know this is the end of the Jen and Julian podcast. And if I think about it too much, and if I say here too much, I'm probably going to cry. And yeah, for me personally, and I think for her fans, it is sad to see her leave the internet, but it's her own personal choice. She wanted to leave on her own accord. And I think that really goes in to the whole conversation about respect and boundaries. Because fast forward down the line, Jenna Marbles was the one that quit. It wasn't Jenna Marbles' boyfriend that quit, Julian Solomita, because no, Julian, he still uploads, he still uploads, he still streams, and all that good old jazz. And I do realize, I think a glitch in the mainframe just happened because I believe I just stated upload twice. Yeah, maybe I am losing my mind. That would be a fine ending to 2020. <laughs> But recently, Julian came out and uploaded a video on one of his stream VODs of where basically he responded to people who, well, that was a nice way to put it. Pesta, I'm, I'm trying to be nice today. I'm trying to be nice, I'm having for once. Basically, what Julian said is that he wants to normalize talking about his girlfriend, Jenna, because every single time he mentions Jenna in a live stream, people start going, oh, is Jenna coming back? Is Jenna coming back to YouTube? Is Jenna back to the internet? And, you know, it's not exactly fair on him. And I get it. It's very easy to miss seeing these two on camera camera together because yes, they were and are a wonderful iconic duo, but at the end of the day, when you overstep boundaries, it leads to statements like these. I want to sort of normalize um, me mentioning her because I know it's been a while since y'all have seen her, but like I see her every day and she's just as much a part of my life as she was before she signed offline and i i know that 99 percent of you guys are coming from a place of love and when you say you know when you react to me mentioning her or whatever it's all very positive and um 
But part of me feels like <clears throat> I know if I mention her name, I'm you know, I'm immediately gonna see comments like I don't know, like Jenna, ooh, ooh, didn't cry, didn't cry. He said Jenna, he said Jenna. Like, and to me, that's just like a little bit discouraging to even bring it up. So in Julian's own words, he's not necessarily saying the people that go to him about Jenna and pester him about Jenna are necessarily bad people, but it does put Julian in a sad position of where he can't mention his own girlfriend without people basically losing their shits. And personally, I am one of the many people that do miss Jenna Marbles' uploads, and maybe she will come back one day, maybe she will, but during that period of time, I'm not gonna go into Julian's streams and basically be like, when's Jenna coming back? Is she gonna come back to the internet? Please get Jenna to come back. Can you imagine how straining that is on somebody mentally to basically non-stop hear about their own girlfriend spoken about in such a, in my opinion, dehumanizing way. It's like people see content creators as merely creators and, and not humans and I, I don't think a lot of people do it deliberately but at the end of the day humans are youtubers and youtubers are humans does does that sound generic and stupid Probably, but I, I am generic and stupid. <laughs> what I'm trying to say here, it comes down to boundaries and respectfulness of privacy. It's clear, Jenna and Julian just want a normal life where Julian can simply mention Jenna on his streams without basically a drama being caused of, oh, uh, Jenna Marbles is returning to YouTube. Jenna Marbles returns to the internet. And, and I don't think they want that. Again, I know you're coming from a good place, but I, on I honestly don't want to cause a scene, you know? So I like, I try to avoid bringing it up sometimes because I don't feel like it's normalized yet. And I would love for that to be a normal thing. I would love for me, like we live together. She's my partner. We, you know, if I'm talking about something that happened that involves us and I mention her name, I would love for people to be like, oh, that happened. Oh, reaction to that thing instead of, Oh my God, he said, Jenna, oh my God, oh my, you know. Now I fully understand that um, by making this video, I am only contributing to the conversation. But for one, I, I think this is going to be my only ever video on Jenna. But also I do want to take this topic and turn it into a bigger conversation, which I keep saying about privacy and conversation. I want to go into speaking about the corpse husband situation where the guy receives needless negativity and needless hate and people speculating over his face. But for one, think how much it must suck for Julie that he can't mention his own partner on a live stream because he thinks people will go crazy. Because at the end of the day, Jenna Marvels took her own adult decision to step away from YouTube. So going to her partner, Julian, and pestering him about that, not only is that not fair on him, it's not fair on Jenna. They clearly both don't want that. And, and yes, I, I don't think it's people meaningfully trying to upset people and trying to be negative. And at the end of the day, people do just miss Jenna. But but I think before you put these messages into a stream chat, just think, one, they're not the same human being. Going to Julian and just spamming about Jenna in his chat, that's, that's not fair. But also, it's not fair in general because an adult has chosen to step away and we should respect that. And a lot of it does come down to mental health. I mean, think how much it must suck for Julian to the fact that he can't mention his girlfriend without it causing a load of headlines, a load of people going crazy, creating a load of stories of old oh, Jenna Marbles is coming back to the internet, which will probably only put pressure on them. I'm not gonna title this video, Jenna Marbles is coming back to the internet because that's not what's happening. Jenna Marbles and Julian, in my opinion, just want this to stop. And I am trying to create a conversation about bad boundaries because I think we need some. I know it's a bit of a taboo thing to say YouTubers are celebrities, but at the end of the day, these people are celebrities. And when it comes to celebrities, I do believe that for some reason, just because people are, are rich, we seem to believe that they don't have mental struggles. Like when Sam Smith was crying this year, people were like, oh, but you're a millionaire. And I get it, they're in a place of privilege, they've got a lot of money, but at the end of the day, that doesn't retract from the fact that they've got feelings and the fact that people are clowning on Sam Smith for crying. That's uh, really confusing because we live in this society that likes to preach about mental health, but when it comes down to it, I think a lot of people just kind of ignore it and push it to the side. I'm not saying that we can't criticize people and I'm not saying we shouldn't speak about people, but at the end of the day, I think when it comes to things like 
pestering Julian to the point of where he can't speak about his own girlfriend, that's not good. That's very, very bad, in fact. Just like I can in my own videos, Julian should be able to be like, oh, I made this food with Jenna earlier and it was really fun. And people should be like, oh, that was really cool, man. And not go into a chat being like, oh my God, is she coming back to the internet? No, if she wants to come back to the internet, she'll let you guys know. And again, I'm not trying to attack the people that have got into his chat and have said these things to the point of where it's caused him to make these responses. But at the end of the day, I, I just think people need to realize that it may not seem like it, but it can really grind at somebody if you constantly repeat something. And I'm sure Julian sees people go crazy about Jenna every single time he mentions her, hence he's responded. When it comes to actual fans doing it, I, I do think it does just come down to a place of missing Jenna. And I, and I, and I get it, you miss Jenna, just be a bit more respectful. It's understandable to miss this. My dog Kermit loves soap and we determined what his favorite soap was by having him do a little soap test. Oh, I like that one. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> and I completely understand why people miss this. It's a dog sniffing soap for 16 minutes. It's, it's a very fun and, and wholesome thing. I mean, maybe me and Kenji should just quit these videos, these commentary videos, and become a dog and and, and human channel. If I hit 700,000 subs by the end of the year, I will upload a video of him sniffing soap. And I hate to be a beg, but I'm actually being serious. I am trying to hit 700,000 subs by the end of the year, and apparently only 50% of the people that watch the channel are subscribed, so if you've forgotten to, and if you just wanna, I would appreciate it if you hit subscribe, and if we do hit 700k, I will actually upload a video of Kenji sniffing soap for 20 minutes. But yeah, moving away from me being a beg, and going back to the actual subject of today's video, I don't think any of this is fair on Julian or Jenna, and it might seem like a very minor thing. I get it. It might seem like, oh, influencers just complaining about small things, but at the end of the day, that does come down to the whole thing of people not taking people's mental health seriously just because they, you know, have money and have some form of fame. And I, I, I get it. People are in better positions on YouTube and it is a very easy job. But at the end of the day, I, I think we need to understand that everyone suffers from mental health issues. And even with things like pestering in a, in a Twitch chat, it can be very grinding if you see that every single day and you start to think, oh, are people just coming here for her and not for me? And you know, it's, it's not fair. And I'm only speculating here, but I can only imagine if that's going on every Every single day, it can be quite grinding and lead to things like this. But for me, it's like, I feel like I sometimes can't talk about my own girlfriend because I will cause this whole circus, little mini circus. You know, I can't post a picture without most of the top comments being like, um, like knowing, you know, we know who took this or I don't even, whatever, you know, stuff like that. I don't know. I'm not trying to like rush anyone on dealing with you know how they're dealing with things but that's where i'm coming from and if you wonder why i don't like sit here and talk about jenna all the time number one it's for her own privacy i want her to be able to like have her life and me not just tell you about her all the time she's offline for a reason but the other reason is like i don't feel like it's normalized for me to talk about her that's all. I mean, imagine being a massive creator and not being able to speak about somebody who was arguably the closest person to you. I think that must suck and it must be mentally draining and this can lead on to the things such as corpse. What the scallop? Okay, uh, sorry about that, but um, getting back into it, yes, uh, corpse husband, it does come back to the exact same thing which I said a million times in this video, respect, privacy, and boundaries. This is another content creator who has had his boundaries disrespected constantly to the point of receiving hate purely because he's a faceless content creator who is successful. It's funny to me because I've seen some people basically suggesting that Corpse Husband's a criminal because he doesn't show his face and then I go onto their profile and in the past they've been preaching about mental health awareness and I'm like, bro, do you have a brain cell? <laughs> like, do you have a single brain cell to suggest somebody is a criminal because they want to not show their face because they don't want to have to deal with all of the public interest in real life and then preach mental health awareness. It makes no sense. You add the two together, makes no sense. And the fact that Corpse fully acknowledges that it's a trend to hate him and that he gets hate for simply existing, it's just sad and disappointing. And, and I think a lot of people really do forget that content creators are human beings. And I say it a million times, we have easier lives than, you know, uh, uh, somebody that isn't a content creator, you know? But at the end of the day, we still have feelings. 
please don't get mad at me for saying that. I'm scared now. Please don't get mad or I'll cry. <laughs> and a lot of people may come out and say, well, you make videos criticizing people. Do you think about their feelings? And uh, yes, I actually do. I make sure in my videos that I don't say something about somebody that I wouldn't want said to me. I never criticize somebody for how they look. I would never do that. I merely critique people's actions. And you know, I like to defend people like I'm doing today and like I've done this month, you know, it's, it's good fun. But at the end of the day, it's frustrating to see that people have gone to the lengths of trying to leak this guy's face and then even bullying other people who they believed were corpse like that justifies it in any weird way there's this tiktok going around of people thinking like it's it's me it's someone it's like a picture of someone and going like it, it's actually like it's really sad um people are saying it's me and it's this guy and this is normal looking guy like this he looks fine but it's, it's someone who's clearly not me and people are like, oh, this is who everyone's simping over and blah, blah, blah. Like, they're just roasting the f out of this guy who would theoretically be me and it just goes to show, like, what would happen if my face revealed. It's just, and that guy didn't ask for his picture to be broadcast as me or whatever. And now he's just getting thousands of people making fun of him. I mean, it sucks that people have to feel that way. And to be honest, I, I kind of relate to it. Sometimes in my videos, I'll be like, oh, I've put on weight during Scene, and then somebody will go and comment, yeah, you look like a piece of shit. And I'm like, oh, I mean, it was a joke, but okay. You know, I, I feel like I can make those jokes, but I wouldn't really want a random person who I've never met and had a connection with to make those statements. And I feel like the people that would comment that about me and the people that do hate Corpse obviously aren't fans of me and they're not fans of Corpse. But at the end of the day, I think you don't need to be a fan to respect boundaries and respect privacy and realize that content creators are human beings. You know, I think that you can set boundaries for a person that you don't even like because it's not your job to make somebody feel uncomfortable. And then we can use that to move back with Julian and the fact that he is uncomfortable to speak about his own girlfriend because he doesn't want to cause this ruckus of people basically being like, oh, is Jenna coming back to the internet? And it's just like, it's not fair on Julian. So the point of what I'm trying to say here is, yes, I have contributed to this conversation but at the end of the day, I'm trying to use this to broaden the conversation and make it people realize that, you know, I, I feel like we need to be even more respectful. And before we put in a comment in a Twitch chat or a comment on a YouTube channel, just think, is this going to upset somebody for a needless reason? Has this person ever done anything wrong to even deserve this? Most of the time, probably not. Even just speculating on what Corp's husband looks like, I, I I don't think that's a nice thing to do. To win this video, we live in a society that preaches mental health, but I think a lot of people are kind of hypocrites when they do it. I'd like to think 99.9% .9 of the people that I watch are very respectful, and yes, we criticize a lot of people, but I think we criticize people for rightful reasons, and then we come out and defend things for rightful reasons. To conclude today's video, I fully understand that a lot of the people that ask Julian about Jenna and lose their minds aren't bad people. They do just miss Jenna and they do understandably miss her content, which is fair. But at the end of the day, if you are going to go into his chat and say those things, remember Julian and Jenna are two different people. I don't think Julian wants a massive bunch of craziness in his own chat every single time he mentions his girlfriend. And I don't think he wants headlines being like, oh, Jenna Marbles is back. Jenna Marbles is back on the internet because I wouldn't personally want that either and I don't think you guys would either. And when it comes to faceless content creators and speculating over what they look like and bullying other people in an attempt to find out what Corpse Husband looks like, it's so, so wrong and it can damage somebody mentally. You're not only damaging Corpse, but you're damaging this poor bloke who's done absolutely nothing wrong. At the end of the day, people, what I'm trying to say is be respectful and be nice. And I think for the most part, all of you know that, but I am just making this video to, you know, spread some awareness about this, and I just felt like being nice today. But that is the ending of the video. If you did enjoy this video, please drop a like. I hope I've been respectful as possible. I've tried not to be intrusive, and I've tried just to be a nice old bugger. If you want to, you know, subscribe to the channel, that'll be bloody marvellous, and I will upload that Kenji video if we do hit 700k by the end of the year, and if you want to like the video, that would be quality. <laughs> and please follow my social medias at inaber69 on Twitter and inaber on Instagram. That is the ending of the video. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I am being weirdly nice today. You may be a little bit creeped out. I haven't been replaced by an alien, but uh, yeah, 
peace out people have a good day i did realize that i started this video by saying something about jeffree star possibly not being normal but at the end of the day i feel like that guy has done a lot of bad shit to warrant being called not normal um i don't know what i'm doing bye